My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio, and today we're going to do a full walkthrough of Carnival Liberty, a carnival ship that is based down in Port Canaveral, Florida. Right now, she is doing three and four night sailings down to the Bahamas, Freeport, and sometimes Princess K. So a little bit about this ship first. She's 110,000 tons, carries 2,974 guests, 952 feet long, and has 13 passenger decks. Like a lot of the other Carnival ships, you do enter Carnival Liberty. Um, you get dumped right into the main atrium. So you come off the gangway, you round the security checkpoint area, and then boom, the uh, atrium hits you in the face. This atrium has a lot of colors and a lot of the like uh, black cast iron all around it. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a couple of moments. What I like about this ship is deck three, four, and five all have entrances to the main show theater. So unlike Carnival Sunshine where you can only enter on deck four and five and some of the other carnival ships, you can actually do three, four, and five here. So depending on, you know, the crowds or where you want to sit, you can either sit in the back if you want to duck out early or sit in the front and get a pretty good view wherever you go. Uh, main dining rooms, two of them on here. Both of them are two stories. And very beautiful with the chandeliers. Very Beauty and the Beast Disney-like with the, the talking silverware. And you'll see the chandeliers as they're hanging from both dining rooms, um, both of the main dining rooms. In fact, the uh, aft dining room is called the Silver Olympian Dining Room. And the forward one is the Gold Olympian Dining Room. I was looking to see how much each dining room sat, but I couldn't find those numbers. Um, all I could really find is that one is the Anytime Dining Restaurant and one is the Traditional Dining Restaurant. The back dining room here, really cool because if you sit in the very back of the back aft dining room, you can get an awesome view of the water. And really cool if you're, you know, you have one of those um, dining times that have sunset, where you could watch that right from the back of the ship, right there from the comfort of your own table. Really, uh, really loving that. So as we walk forward, we're going to walk through the conservatory aft atrium and then go to the cabinet bar. And the cabinet bar, that's used for a lot of the karaoke. There's also different kinds of bands in there. I believe there was a Latin band um, playing in here whenever we sailed last year. Um, a fun little place, you know, quiet, not too loud, um, right below the disco and right above the galley, actually, for the both dining rooms on the Carnival ship. There is a, a walkway here, so if you were to walk right down this area and go up those steps right there to your left-hand side, that would actually take you up to the promenade on Deck 5. But we're going to keep walking here, and we're going to walk right past the main conference room. This is where a lot of the companies that you know bring their employees on the ship, they can do their conferences in this room here. Also, um, for the like training on board the ship, you'll often see crew members in there if it's not being utilized by the guests. And then we'll walk through the dining room again. This is the fourth deck of the midship dining room. And as you can see, just as beautiful on the fourth deck as the third deck, obviously. Coming out of here, you have the kids area to your left-hand side. And this will dump you right into the main atrium. So the main atrium spans deck three, four, and five on Carnival Liberty. And also four elevators in the atrium as well. So you could, if you want to get a really cool view and take some cool shots, jump in one of those elevators on deck two or deck three and take it all the way up to deck 10. Um, you have the library here. Really old time feel in the library. A lot of board games and a lot of books. A lot of empty space on this deck too. I was really, I, this might be the photo area come to think of it because it seems like Carnival would just like wouldn't leave that space unutilized. Taking a pan here of the main atrium, you have the atrium bar down there. Pixels Photo Gallery on the other side of where I am right now. So yeah, behind me is probably um, those cabinets open up for pictures as well. If you were to walk forward on deck four, you would hit the main theater again, another entrance for the Showtime Theater. And then you have the bank of elevators here. There are six elevators, two or three on the left, three on the right. And then we'll walk into the main theater again. And this is again the three floor theater you can enter from decks three four and five love the design of this theater too they did a good job laying this theater out and not a lot of um site issues there are some so you have to watch out where you're seating but on embarkation day i mean you're going to board on deck three anyways you know pop there to your left when you board the ship and poke your head in there and see where you want to sit kind of scout your area out 
So walking out of the casino now and walking down the main promenade, uh, before we get to the promenade, you're going to have the fun shops on both sides of the ships. That where you, That's where you can get those watches or the jewelry. Some of them have the Pandora charms, also the collectibles like the t-shirts, the mugs, the Christmas tree ornaments, the ship models. Really cool. If you want to get one of those ship models too, uh, since 2016, I've bought one on every sailing and every cruise line, not just Carnival. And I have it in my, um, under my TV, my entertainment center. I have a bunch of cool little model ships, random side note there. So in case you're wondering, so you have the casino here on the right hand side. Again, the promenade that kind of hugs the left side of the ship here as you're walking aft and you're going to have your casino bar there too. And this is a smoking bar. And uh, one thing I will mention though, with the casino bar on Carnival Liberty, The smoking really wasn't an issue for me. I'm not a smoker. I don't have any asthma or anything like that. But I didn't notice any kind of like really strong smoke. Um, But if you're sensitive to smoke, yeah, people do sit around this bar. It's like a big circle. And they do smoke 24 hours a day. So uh, the ventilation system seems to be pretty decent. And you don't really smell the smoke as you make your way out of the casino walking aft like you're going um, towards the back of the ship. You have the Fun Points desk here on your right-hand side, and just past that is the coffee shop. Plenty of iron hanging from the ceilings on this ship. I I love the amount of iron they used on this ship. It's got to be like at least 15,000 tons of iron on here. Uh, Making your way back, plenty of seating. You have the kids' club on your right-hand side there where they can kind of dance the night away. Um, The promenade, very long and lots of seating, so I, I do like this area. I keep stressing the seating factor um, a lot because, you know, people are always looking for places to chill, places to read, especially on sea days if they don't want to sit out in the sun or they get sunburned. Um, a lot of areas here where you can go. The nightclub is always fun on Carnival Liberty. Notice the hands. They look like they're holding the ceiling up. Um, this is open late. They have ladies night, different theme parties in here throughout the week. Uh, also some specialty or sp- drink specials rather on some nights. I think it's always ladies night on embarkation night in the nightclub here. Alchemy Bar just on the outside of the uh, nightclub and then just behind the alchemy bar is the piano bar walking out of the piano bar this is part of the they call this the aft atrium it's actually three decks so if you were to look down two decks you would see the entrance to the dining rooms on levels three and four and then here we are on five right now walking into the aft lounge This is where they hold the Punchliner Comedy Club at nighttime. As you can see, plenty of seating here, so not really an issue trying to find a seat. However, I will say if you're trying to get a decent seat for the adults-only comedy show, make sure you come in a little bit earlier. This little lounge back here, a cool little lounge. A lot of karaoke is done back here, and there's a bar and some other seating areas um, or another seating area for the ship, rather. Not really always hopping, but... It is an alternate to all the other bars on Carnival Liberty. Uh, As we make our way back out through here, we'll have an atrium bank with six elevators again, like we had six forward. And then right back into the um, Alchemy Bar here, which the Alchemy Bar isn't open right now. This was shot around 11 a.m. and they don't open until I believe five or so on embarkation day. Here's another shot of the main atrium here. Again, you enter the ship into the main atrium on deck three. We're shooting up on deck five right now. The fun shops are both to the left and and right of me uh, as you make your way. And there's one of those glass elevators that are very Willy Wonka, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory-ish with the glass elevators. Every time I get into one of those, I think about it. Here's another shot of the show theater here because uh, I showed you levels three and four, I believe. This is from the fifth level, so the very last level you can get into the show theater, the the Venetian Palace, they call it, and it seats 1,400 guests. Again, as you can see, not a lot of obstructions in here, but there are just a couple of poles obviously holding the roof up, I guess, so you kind of need those. Here we are looking onto the Lido deck. The Lido deck is deck number nine on Carnival Liberty. Looking down right there, that's the Red Frog Rum Bar. Directly underneath me is Guy's Burger Joint, and then you have the pool. And then to the left-hand side of me is going to be the Blue Iguana Cantina underneath me. Now, uh, Guy's Burger Joint on Carnival Liberty, they seem to have their stuff together more so on Liberty than they do on Carnival Sunshine. Carnival Sunshine, it just seems like, I know it holds a little bit more uh, people on there, but it just seems like it takes forever to get a burger on Sunshine. And Carnival Liberty, you know, they're feeding you through both sides here, and they're 
they're they're pretty efficient when it comes to to serving your burger. Of course, you can pick from one of the six burgers there, and this is open from about eleven thirty to six o'clock on embarkation day, and then twelve to six, I believe, on sea days. And your Nassau day will be twelve to six as well. And you want to grab one of those napkins too, because those uh, those burgers can get pretty greasy. So now we'll walk into the Lido Deck Marketplace. Actually, I believe on this ship it's called Emile's, uh, the restaurant. I do like this ship because. So in the Lido deck on this class of ship and a couple other classes, it's mirrored. So what you see right here, if you walk to the back of the ship, it's basically the same setup minus the Mongolian walk. So you're not, everyone's not just crowded. Whereas on Carnival Sunshine, there is just one centralized Lido deck marketplace on Carnival Liberty. Uh, they kind of they mirror each other, so you're everyone's not stuck right in this spot. You can keep walking back and go to the same selection, cake pops and all, right in the back of the ship. So I do like that for this ship. Again, Mongolian walk, not in the back of the ship. If you want the walk, you'll have to go right here to the front part. But up here on the right-hand side is going to be the Carnival Deli, and that's going to uh, be where you get your Rubens, your turkey wraps, your hot ham and cheeses, and all the good stuff here as well. Another thing I like about the aft part on deck nine is there are two decks to eat on. So you're not just limited to sitting on deck nine. As we round the corner, you'll see a staircase and left and right hand side. It's going to take you up to deck number 10. Okay, so now we're up on deck number 10. Directly below us is the buffet area, and this is where you can get the barbecue. Now, on the other ships, they call it Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue, but on Carnival Liberty... I don't know if it's a life a licensing thing or they don't have it where they cannot call it. So it's called old fashioned barbecue on here. Same stuff like the baked beans, the mac and cheese, the brisket, the chicken, the awesome rolls, the coleslaw potato salad, and even Guy uh, Guy Fieri sausages or sauces are right there. No sausages though. So as you can see, maybe it's coming soon to this ship. But regardless, they do have barbecue on Carnival Liberty, and it is really good. Now walking backwards from here, if we were to go back down to deck number nine, that's going to be where the aft pool is. And so one thing I've noticed on this ship is though it's not officially an adults only pool, I've been on this ship twice in the past month. And every time I walk on the ship and someone tries to bring little ones back to the aft pool, they're going to say, hey, this is an adults only 18 and up pool. So I don't know if it's loosely enforced, if it's official, not really sure, but um, we're just going to say it's an adults only pool because they're not letting kids back here, which is fine with me. Uh, So we just passed the Seafood Shack, which is like their New England style eatery that has all of the fresh lobster, the fresh fish, uh, clam chowder is cooked to order. This is the Pizza Pirate where they have 24 hours a day pizza, whatever kind you'd like. There's like four different kinds here. They used to serve salads here. I guess they quit doing that. Maybe too much waste or whatnot. As we spin around here, you'll see there's a bar, uh, the aft pool bar, and then there's steps on each side of the ship that go up to the deck number 10. And that's just more seating and a little overview of the pool. One thing I like about this back area too is that they do have a retractable roof. So if it's inclement weather, they can shut that hatch and you could still swim and enjoy yourself in the back, drink by the pool with the roof shut. We'll take one more walk here through the Lido Deck Marketplace, the uh, Emile's Restaurant, I guess they call it. I I call it the Lido Deck Marketplace. I realize it's only on really, it's called that on the new ships, but it's always Lido Deck Marketplace to me. Express Sushi right here on the right-hand side. That's for fee. So that's F-E-E. You have to pay for that sushi. Coming up here, so we passed the first section of buffets as we're making our way forward now. So as we round this corner, this is the second section or the mid buffets. Again, they're mirrored, same in the front, same in the back, with the exception of this Mongolian walk, which is right here on the upper right-hand side of the screen. You know, salad bar back here, you have some of your hot dishes, the carving station, and all of that is up here as well. Again, we're walking through here where the ice cream machines are, and then to the left-hand side of me is going to be Guy's Burger Joint with the five different kind of burgers you can get here, and then the Lido Deck Pool. Um, Straight ahead of me right now is the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, and that's where you can get your uh, different types of tequilas. Uh, On the opposite side, as we're walking through here, it looks like it's kind of closed for repairs, but it's uh, that's the Red Frog Rum Bar. You know what? This actually was still early. This is probably 
I think I was walking through the ship here at 10 o'clock, so the guests were just getting off the ship, and they were trying to turn the ship around. So that's why it's such a you know uh, such a deadsville around here. Not really a lot of people. Uh, as you can see, kid life jackets there. Looking up here, you can see the tiered deck system where there are one, two, three, about four or five different tiers where you can get a lawn chair and overlook the pool so that's always good if you were to keep walking up here you would eventually hit the serenity area and also go to the water slide uh two hot tubs as of one right here and just opposite you kind of see it where that person's walking by there's a hot tub just on the other side of him and an area uh, a round area with six different chairs that overlooks the lido deck um, and the big screen so if you're looking for the dive in movies at night you can chill up here and you don't, you don't have to sit like right under the screen. You can sit in one of these tiered areas and watch the movie and have perfect sound as well. You'll see the slide there. That slide is open most days. In fact, it was open embarkation day starting at around 12 o'clock. And boy, people were all over that. One thing I will say about Carnival Liberty is it never is too crazy around the pool. And I think that is, you know, you could thank the tiered level uh, sun chair system for that. And also deck nine and 10 both have lawn chairs as well. And then underneath the dive in movie screen, also lawn chairs down there where you can kind of sit down and hang out. Um, another hot tub here just underneath the pool. And then you have a swimming pool here and a, a landing pad, I guess you would say, for whenever you take the slide from deck 14 down here to deck number 10. As you can see, we still have a lot more chairs here on the upper level on deck 10 as we're making our way towards the back of the pool. Again, notice the dive-in movie screen and not really a bad seat in the house for trying to watch a dive-in movie. And the sound system seems adequate where you can be sitting anywhere in view of the screen and have, have a good audio experience when it comes to the sound for the movie. Also, make sure you take advantage of some of that popcorn, too. That's some good popcorn they serve during the movie theater. Um, so walking up to deck number 11, you have the jogging track up on deck number 11. You have the, uh, the basketball court up here as well. One thing that I didn't get a shot of, but if you go up one more deck onto deck 12, just under the funnel, you will have the golf course. So you can have some some putt-putt golf up there and have your have your fun with miniature golf, I guess. And uh, the, the balls are up there, and so are the clubs, so you don't have to check them out or anything. Just walk up there and, and start playing. Have at it. This young lady who's playing the steel drums, she is really talented. In fact, she was playing everything from a mix of everything from Red Red Wine from UB40 to Under the Sea from Little Mermaid. So, yeah, she's really good. Now we'll walk into Spa Carnival. And this is the area where you can get your massages, get your, there's a salon in here. This is the men's dressing room we're walking through, the men's locker room, I guess. This area has the showers, the bathrooms, um, some lockers for you if you want to put your stuff in before you go to the gym. That's the, um, that's the shower area right there. And then walking into here takes you right into the gym. The ladies' side, it's the same way. So the women have the same type area just on the opposite side of the ship. Plenty of workout uh, equipment in here. You have your treadmills. You have your dumbbells. If you want to lift in here, you could do that. The ellipticals. And there's a fitness studio in here as well. I haven't really seen this used. Again, I'm not up here a lot when I'm sailing. But by the look, uh, uh, the looks at it, it looks by the looks of it, rather, it looks like it's maybe for a spin class up here. You could also take advantage of both the steam room and the sauna. Both of them are free of charge. The women's have theirs in their locker room, and the men's have theirs in their locker room as well. Again, no charge for this. Making your way outside of the locker room, here you have the lockers, and you do have your towels there. And you go through the door, takes you back out to the reception area. Well, go down the little hallway first. I guess you have to have your privacy, kind of a double door entrance and a double door exit. And then that dumps you right into the exit here, which is the main lobby of Spa Carnival. Very purpley, a lot like Carnival Triumph, um, how that ship is very purple. So is this ship in some parts. So the jogging track is on deck number 11 on Carnival Liberty. And if you were to keep walk, uh, following the jogging track to the back part of the ship here, you'll see a bunch of lawn chairs that are currently stacked up. But during the daytime, they actually spread those lawn chairs out. So yet more seating for Carnival Liberty, which that's one thing I really like about this ship is there, there's plenty of seating. And if you compare it to Carnival Sunshine, which is also based in Port Canaveral, Carnival Sunshine is um, has more people 
but this ship has more tonnage, if that makes sense. So like Carnival Sunshine carries, what, 3,600 people? This ship only carries like 2,900 people and is a bigger ship than Sunshine. So Sunshine, they're really cramming you in. And this ship is a little more, I guess I guess we'll call it elbow rim, right? Now, one, thing, one place we haven't looked at yet, and that is the Serenity area. Two-deck Serenity. There's deck number 12 and deck number 14. Again, this ship does not have a deck number 13. I don't think any of the Carnival ships do, actually. I know I've said this before, but if they do, correct me in the comments below, so I will know. The Kids Club is here on deck number 12 on Carnival Liberty, and you might be thinking, why is the Kids Club up in Serenity? And yeah, I was thinking the same thing too, but the kids don't enter and um, exit the club from the Serenity area. They do it from the inside where the elevator bank is. But as you can see on the front of the ship, the kids' playground butts up right against Serenity. So if it was me hanging out, I would go up one deck because, again, it's a two-story Serenity, and I would hang out on deck number 14 of Serenity up there. Plus, you have two different hot tubs and just a little bit more peace and quiet, I would say. I love the hammocks in Serenity, too. The ham hammocks are really cool, especially at nighttime. None of this stuff is used. It's almost like people don't even realize this place exists at night. So a little quiet spot. I mean, don't be stupid up there. But I mean, if you want to have a little uh, quiet time, go up to deck number 14, Serenity, and you'll enjoy yourself. Spend another few seconds here in Serenity, and then we'll look at the last thing we have on the list. And that is going to be the water slide. The water slide is so <laughs> it cracks me up because... They need to put some more, either some more water pressure behind it because people are getting stuck on this thing. And so much so where there is a guy who is smaller than me, and I'm like 170. He was going on it. He was trying to slide down, and he was getting stuck on this thing too. So I don't know if they need to pump more water in the water slide or what, but once you get going, you get going. But that first, that first area there on the water slide seems to be the toughest for most people. So there you have it. There's our walkthrough of Carnival Liberty. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, let's see what else here. Oh, yeah, don't forget to check out the Cruise Radio Weekly Podcast. That could be found on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, wherever you listen to your podcast, just type in Cruise Radio, uh, and you'll find us there. Also, our website, cruiseradio.net. Once again, my name is Doug Parker. I am the host of Cruise Radio. Thank you so much for watching.